In the end, narcissists will play themselves, because they underestimated you. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button as we explore our destinies together. Thank you for taking the time to visit our channel, your support means a lot to us. If you enjoy the content we provide, please give us a thumbs up. It helps our channel grow and reach more people. In today's video, we will discuss a fascinating aspect of narcissists, how they often end up playing themselves because they underestimated you. It's an intriguing topic, so let's delve into it. First, let's examine the behavior of narcissists more closely. Narcissists often exhibit a peculiar form of thinking that can be described as selectively ignorant. They tend to lack common sense and frequently operate under the assumption that the grass is always greener on the other side. However, once they leap into new situations, they often discover that the grass is not as lush as they imagined, in fact, it can be just as barren as where they came from. Now, let's focus on two critical moments when a narcissist becomes particularly vulnerable. The first moment is when they have sustained a significant narcissistic injury. This means that they have experienced a blow to their ego that leaves them feeling exposed and vulnerable. Just like a fallen fighter who has been knocked down, a narcissist can find themselves in a state where they are open to influence and manipulation. The second moment of vulnerability occurs during what is known as love bombing. This phase often involves a narcissist showering someone with excessive affection and admiration. They do this to secure their supply of attention and validation, which they constantly seek. Even when they are in a relationship, they are often grooming new sources of supply, always looking for someone to fulfill their emotional needs. So, let's concentrate on the first scenario where a narcissist has experienced a significant narcissistic injury, particularly after a discard has taken place. It is important to understand that this discard is not a spontaneous decision, it is typically part of a larger cycle of behavior that narcissists follow. This cycle consists of three main phases, love bombing, devaluation, and discard. After the initial phase of intense admiration and affection, the narcissist will begin to devalue their partner, often criticizing or belittling them. Eventually, they reach the discard phase, where they abandon the relationship altogether. This discard is a planned act reflecting the narcissist's need to maintain control and manipulate their supply. I don't care if it all happens over a weekend and you find yourself back together with them by Tuesday, that narcissist will continue to repeat the same cycle without fail. This is why I say they are selectively ignorant. They engage in the same behaviors repeatedly, all while expecting a different outcome each time. It takes a special kind of mindset to repeatedly do the same thing and hope for different results. This is why many people describe these individuals as irrational or even insane. It's perplexing to witness someone who, without fail, follows the same pattern, yet seems surprised when things don't change. After the discard phase, what typically happens is that the narcissist moves on to someone else. They are now open and ready to seek new supply. However, they play themselves every single time because they fail to recognize the consequences of their actions. Everything that happened during the discard, whether it was with you or someone else, has left a mark. If you are watching this video, you are likely trying to make sense of what occurred. You might feel like you were caught in a situation that seemed almost surreal, like something out of a Hollywood movie. Indeed, it can feel that way. When you attempt to explain the dynamics of a narcissistic relationship to others, they often struggle to understand. Many may wonder, why didn't you just leave? But leaving isn't that simple. A trauma bond forms in these relationships, creating an emotional addiction that is difficult to break. Now, let's return to the narcissist. Once they have discarded you, they often adopt the role of the victim. They feel the need to find new supply to validate their self-worth. In this state, they are open and vulnerable, which sets the stage for their eventual downfall. It's essential to understand that narcissists do not always succeed in their pursuits. They may think they can escape the consequences of their actions, but everything they have done will eventually catch up with them. The idea of karma is very real in these situations. It is often said that karma is a patient force, it may take time, but it will come back to them, 
and when it does, it usually arrives with great intensity. As they enter into a new relationship, they do so underestimating you. They believe that their tactics, like gaslighting, will continue to work effectively. Gaslighting is a manipulative tactic that causes victims to question their reality, leading them to feel confused and unstable. The narcissist may think that their previous behaviors will allow them to control their new partner, just as they did with you. However, what they fail to realize is that you have learned from your experience. You have taken note of their manipulative strategies and are now aware of the patterns they exhibit. This awareness gives you strength and insight that they do not anticipate. They are triangulating you, not just with a familiar face, but with an entire cast of characters, like something out of a storybook. Imagine a scene from Charlotte's Web, where all the animals on the farm are involved. The narcissist is not just pulling one person into the drama, they are involving ducks, chickens, pigs, and every other creature in their web of manipulation. Moreover, they will often triangulate you using outright lies. I've mentioned before that the narcissist is essentially a lie embodied. They walk and breathe deception, and this is a fundamental part of their strategy. By creating a narrative filled with falsehoods, they can manipulate your emotions and perceptions, making you doubt yourself and your reality. All of this triangulation feeds into the cycle of devaluation and discard. During these phases, the narcissist is actively working to undermine your self-esteem and sense of worth. They will create chaos and confusion, leaving you to question your own experiences. It can feel overwhelming, and you might find yourself reflecting on how you managed to endure such a tumultuous situation. It's important to understand that the narcissist's behavior is a calculated design. They thrive on the chaos they create, using it to distract you and maintain control over the situation. When you look back on your experience, it may feel like a whirlwind of events, with one crisis after another. This is all part of their manipulation tactics. However, what you must remember is that what goes around comes around. The narcissist may have engaged in devaluation and then discarded you, thinking they could move on without consequences. They fail to recognize your strength and resilience, which is a significant mistake on their part. Now, they are barreling forward like a freight train, full steam ahead with their new supply, often another individual who mirrors their own traits. This new relationship often becomes its own cycle of dysfunction. Just as the narcissist treated you, they will likely find themselves in a similar situation with this new person. The new supply may be experiencing the same manipulation, gaslighting, and emotional abuse that you endured. It's a repetitive cycle that the narcissist seems unable to escape. During this transitional phase, you might notice that the narcissist appears to be laying low. You won't see much activity from them initially, as they are focused on figuring out their new supply and establishing control in that relationship. This could be someone who was always in the background, someone you might not have known about until now. You may learn about this through family members or mutual friends who share the news that the narcissist has moved on with someone else. Well, who cares? After all, who wants a bird in their life? We all know what birds do, and I'm not just talking about the simple act of flying. Birds can symbolize a lack of commitment and stability. As I mentioned before, we don't do birds here, especially not pigeons. That's exactly what the narcissist has ended up with, a recycled, unreliable partner. The narcissist ultimately plays themselves because everything they did to you, every instance of gaslighting, projection, and blame shifting, was all part of a larger plan. During the discard phase, they use these manipulative tactics to prepare you for the inevitable hoovering. Hoovering is when they attempt to suck you back into their toxic orbit after they've discarded you. They know they will return, they are simply waiting for the right moment to revisit the scene of the emotional turmoil they caused. The discard often occurs at the most inopportune times to inflict the maximum amount of pain. This is a calculated strategy to ensure that when they come back, you are vulnerable and longing for the connection you once had. They want to make sure that when you are in pain, you will likely say, yes, of course, when they reach out again. At that moment, you may not want to discuss what happened because you are still trying to understand the chaotic relationship you just endured. Let me explain how this scenario often plays out. 
While I won't say it happens every time, many narcissists do find themselves in a new relationship after discarding you. In this new relationship, the new supply will idealize them in the same way they did with you initially. It's a temporary illusion where everything seems perfect. The narcissist might feel validated and adored once again, thinking they have found true love. However, fast forward two, three, or even five months down the line, and the reality begins to set in. The narcissist might have fallen in love with the idea of this new person, believing that they are everything they ever wanted. But when I say everything, I'm not referring to positive qualities. Often, they fall in love with superficial traits, not recognizing the deeper flaws that lie beneath the surface. You, on the other hand, have been working on yourself. You've been keeping yourself looking good, taking care of your appearance, and focusing on personal growth. Meanwhile, the narcissist is with someone who could be described as a toad, someone equally dysfunctional and unworthy. What happens next is quite telling. They often don't realize the true nature of their new partner until it's too late. By the time the narcissist figures it out, you might find yourself in a position where you don't have the chance to make adjustments or reflect deeply on what happened between you two. You might catch a glimpse of this new partner, the toad they chose over you. This realization can be jarring and painful, especially when you see the stark contrast between how you have grown and who they have settled for. And look, they might have a few ducks around them too, and you catch a glimpse of that. As you observe the situation, you can't help but find humor in it. It's ironic, really. While they were caught up in their idealization phase with the new supply, you were left in the shadows, feeling devalued and overlooked. During the time when the narcissist was idealizing their new partner, you were silently assessing the situation. You were keenly aware of their behavior and how they were treating you versus how they were treating this new person. They underestimated your ability to see through their facade. While they were busy putting on a show, you were taking mental notes of every inconsistency and manipulation. What they didn't realize was that you were seeking strength from a higher power. You were calling on Abba, the Almighty Father, asking for guidance and resilience to break free from the cycle of manipulation. You were preparing yourself for the moment when they would inevitably attempt to return, thinking they could pick up where they left off. But when they came back, they found that there was nothing left for them to return to. You had taken control of your life. You metaphorically snatched the generator out of their grasp while they were distracted with their new supply, a clown, a toad, and a few ducks. They thought they could play you, believing they could elevate their new partner to the primary supply position while relegating you to a secondary role, a mere side chick. It takes a special kind of delusion for someone to think they can demote you when you are grade A supply. Most of you listening to this video are, in fact, grade A supply. You have qualities that are rare and valuable, and you deserve to be treated as such. You called upon your inner strength and the support from higher realms, praying for the courage to reclaim your life. When the narcissist returned, expecting to find you still in a vulnerable state, they were met with a different reality. You had transformed your life during their absence. You had been busy rebuilding and rediscovering your self-worth. While they were entangled in their chaotic relationships, you were laying the foundation for your future. Now, they found themselves stuck with someone who was not only beneath you, but also someone they couldn't quite figure out. Their new partner was likely just as confused and lost as they were, leading to an unstable and chaotic dynamic. See, they placed you on their chessboard, treating you like a mere pawn in their game. This is how the narcissist operates, using you as a tool for their own gain while they maneuver around the board, completely disregarding your worth. But when they returned and looked at that chessboard, they were in for a surprise. Instead of seeing you as just a pawn, they saw your name associated with the queen or even the king. In chess, the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. She can move in any direction and cover great distances. Her power lies not only in her ability to attack, but also in her role of protecting the king. The king, while not as mobile, is crucial to the game and can also move strategically to ensure his safety. This shift in perception is significant because it highlights how you have transformed. You have taken back your power and recognized your own value. You have snatched the generator of your strength and energy, turning your pain into a passion that fuels your growth. 
This transformation allows you to reclaim who you are, not just in the eyes of the narcissist, but also in your own life. When the narcissist attempts to come back, they find that there is nothing for them to return to. You have risen above their chaos and are now thriving without them. You have made it clear that they must remain with their circus, a collection of clowns and toads that mirror their own dysfunction. They may have chosen a new partner who is, quite frankly, a poor substitute for you. This new supply might be someone who lacks depth and intelligence, perhaps someone who is even larger than life in all the wrong ways. Meanwhile, you are flourishing, looking radiant and full of life. The contrast is striking, and it serves as a reminder of your worth. It is crucial to understand that narcissists do not always succeed in their manipulations. They underestimate you while they are busy playing themselves. Their lack of awareness is astonishing, they engage in the same behaviors repeatedly, demonstrating a complete lack of common sense. This selective ignorance leads them to continue their cycle of manipulation, often resulting in their own downfall. What they didn't expect was for you to catch on to their games. You recognized the mess they were creating and chose to take back your toys, so to speak. You didn't just leave, you moved into a whole new world, one that is brighter and more fulfilling. This is a significant step in your journey toward healing and self-discovery. I always remind you to keep your vibrations high and your thoughts positive. Maintaining this elevated frequency is a strategy that will help you stay out of the narcissist's orbit. By focusing on your own growth and well-being, you create a barrier that protects you from their toxic influence. You are no longer a pawn, you are now a powerful player on the board, able to navigate your life with intention and purpose. But trust and believe every single time they are going to play themselves. And when they do, especially if you are a super empath or a light worker, you will regain your strength. Yes, you will. The narcissist will be left to figure things out in their chaotic world while you rise above it all. You have to understand that it takes a special kind of mindset to think that you will continue to deal with their mess. The narcissist expects you to stay trapped in their web of manipulation, but that is not the path for you. They often move on and find themselves in relationships with people who mirror their own toxic traits, leading to a cycle of karma that comes back around. It's important to recognize that a narcissist does not always succeed in their manipulative games. They might try to disrupt your life, only to end up facing the consequences of their actions in their new relationships. They may believe they can re-idealize someone else, but they will soon discover that the chaos they create follows them wherever they go. I wanted to share this message with you to remind you of your strength and resilience. Make sure you stay armed with knowledge and confidence. As you navigate your journey, remember to keep your vibrations high and focus on your well-being. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content, please give this video a like, leave a comment, share it with others, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us reach more people and continue sharing valuable insights. Until the next video, may you be blessed and highly favored. Goodbye.